Today, we will discuss fire safety in the laboratory. The complexity of laboratory activities requires knowledge and constant vigilance, especially when it comes to fire and life safety. This video will identify three critical components to fire and life safety readiness for the laboratory, recognizing hazards, evaluating laboratory, and protecting yourself. Begin by reviewing potential laboratory hazards using the checklist and the laboratory hazard assessment tools. Copies of these documents must be kept in your laboratory manual. Once hazards are identified, proper steps can be taken to mitigate their danger. Next, conduct a thorough evaluation of your entire lab, including your housekeeping and storage practices. Begin at the main entrance and take a careful look around. Good housekeeping helps eliminate fire hazards and maintains access to emergency equipment. Be sure all laboratory spaces are clear of all unused boxes, paper and other combustible materials as these items increase the potential for fire in the work area. Store or dispose of chemicals not being used, especially flammable or combustible liquids or reactive materials. Emergency personnel must have clear access to electrical breakers and panels. Maintain clear access to emergency equipment, such as eye wash stations, safety showers, and fire alarm pole stations. Storage of chemicals and flammable or combustible liquids requires specific attention. Acids and corrosives must always be stored in an acid corrosive cabinet. Store acids in secondary containment, separate from bases. At any given time, no more than 10 gallons of flammable and or combustible liquids may be kept outside the storage cabinets in laboratory areas. The vapor contact in flammable material containers may still pose a potential hazard. Therefore, properly dispose of all empty or unnecessary containers in the lab. Fume hoods must be carefully operated, maintained and kept free of unnecessary clutter. Do not use fume hoods for storage. Organize and minimize necessary chemicals and equipment. Keep chemical containers within the fume hood closed. Ensure proper functioning of audible and visual alarms. Fire and life safety preparedness extends outside the lab. The corridors and office spaces surrounding your lab are vital links allowing evacuation in an emergency. In the event of a fire, wedging or blocking doors open permits toxic smoke and gases to migrate from the fire area into the exit corridor, making it difficult or impossible for occupants to exit safely. Familiarize yourself with the building evacuation plan. Evacuation plan signs are normally located at stairwells and elevator lobbies. These signs identify exit path, stairwells, fire extinguishers. In the event that the building should fill with smoke, exit signs may be your only visible way to finding an exit. It is imperative to leave the building immediately when the fire alarm sounds. In addition to recognizing hazards and evaluating your laboratory, you must take steps to protect yourself. Personal protective equipment, often known as PPE, is key to ensuring your personal safety. This starts with your clothing. Anyone entering the laboratory must wear full-length pants and closed-toed shoes. No flip-flops or any other open-toed shoes are permitted. We also recommend that your clothing be made from natural fibers such as cotton because these materials offer better protection in the event of a fire. A properly fitting lab coat, face and or eye protection, gloves of the correct size and tight for the hazard involved. Other lab or hazard specific PPE items may be necessary, such as respiratory or hearing protection. In the event of an accident, you may be disoriented and need assistance. Your partner can provide vital, potentially life-saving help. Familiarity with laboratory emergency equipment is essential. In areas where chemicals are stored, used or handled, an emergency shower and an eye wash station must be accessible within 10 seconds. 
If your lab coat catches fire, use the emergency shower to douse the flames. Use the shower long enough to remove any contaminating material and cool the skin and body. This minimizes damages caused by burns. If a shower is not available, then stop, drop, and roll. Stop where you are, don't run, drop to the floor, roll, covering your face with your hands, and roll back and forth from side to side to extinguish the flames. When a fire is discovered, regardless of its size, report it immediately from any campus phone. Be prepared to tell the operator vital information, such as what is on fire, where the fire is located, if there are any injuries, and if you are going to use a fire extinguisher. Do not hang up until the operator tells you to do so. If evacuation is necessary, pull the fire alarm and proceed to the nearest exit. Do not re-enter the building until authorized by the fire department. Personnel working in lab areas should know how to use and properly identify a fire extinguisher appropriate to the material being handled. Keep your fire extinguisher accessible and clear of obstructions at all time. Know how to select a proper fire extinguisher. Fires are classified according to the material that is burning. The types of fire extinguisher used in a lab are Class A, Class B, Class C and Class D. Class A fire extinguishers are used to extinguish fires involving ordinary combustibles such as paper products, cloth, wall and some plastics. Class B fire extinguishers are used to extinguish fires involving flammable liquids or gases such as gasoline, alcohol, solvents, grease and oils. Class C fire extinguishers are used to extinguish fires involving energized electrical equipment or an electrical source. Class D fire extinguishers are used to extinguish fires involving combustible metals. Materials in this category include sodium, potassium and magnesium. Once properly trained on how to use a fire extinguisher, always remember to use the PASS method. P. Pull and twist the safety pin from the handle. A. Aim at the base of the fire. S. Squeeze the handle trigger. And S. Sweep from side to side the full length of the fire. Remember to report all fires regardless of size. Also be sure to report any item a fire extinguisher is discharged. In this video, we have identified critical components to fire and life safety for the laboratory. Step 1. Recognize the laboratory hazards and the laboratory hazard assessment tool. Step 2. Evaluate the lab, including your housekeeping practices, storage requirements and fume hood use. Step 3. Protect yourself throughout the selection and use of proper personal protective equipment. Educate yourself on the use of the emergency equipment, including a fire extinguisher. Fire and life safety preparation is critical to your health and safety.